All right, we are here for this next, uh, next webinar that we're gonna be doing on how to find apartment syndication deals. And so today we're gonna to be covering what we're gonna be covering the criteria that you need to have in, in place in order to find these deals. We're gonna talk about the top eight strategies. So I increased it by three more. So I've uh, we're gonna juice that up just a little bit. So on the webinar here it says, or the webinar page it says top five strategies, but I'm gonna give you top, the, my top eight strategies. And then I'm also gonna to talk to you about a little special software that we use to be able to keep track of your deal flow, which will be very um, important for you to be able to use as well. So, and of course, as usual, I always throw in a couple of extra things in there as well. And so first off, let's, let's go over setting your criteria because this is very important. And then there's four main things that you need to set. And I would highly encourage you to write these things down and to make sure that as you move forward, you get very clear on what these four things are. So, and the, and the criteria we're talking about is, is what type of deal are you looking for? What type of asset are you looking for? And so number one, you have to set the age. Number two, you have to set the class of the property. Number three, the number of doors. And number four, the, 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 the amount, the, high, the, 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 the range of price that you want to purchase that property on. So to give you an example, our, our criteria with PassiveInvesting.com is going to be the age of the property where we want to be between 1995 and 2005 vintage for our B plus assets. When we're looking at our A class assets, we're usually going to be having them at least between about five to 10 years old. So whatever that year is, usually about five to 10 years old. So 2000 to 2005 is what we're looking for right now. And of course, the class of the property, A class, B class, C class, D class type of property, the A's being the really nice properties, the C's being the lower end properties, um, some of the affordable housing properties as well. Number of doors is the number of units or how many you know, actual uh, are units are in that property. So if it's 170 units, then there's 170 units that are in that property where different people can be occupying that property. And of course, the dollar amount. So our, our minimum uh, number of units is typically 200 but we'll also consider one that's less than that as long as it's at least a minimum 20 million in purchase price. So we wanna have minimum 20 million in purchase price for our criteria. So your criteria is gonna be a little bit different, maybe not, but you might have a different criteria, but you have to sit down and figure out where you, where you are right now and, and what criteria you're gonna set for yourself. So it's the age, the class, the number of doors, and the, the dollar amount of that property. And I wanna stop here for just a quick moment and just remind you, for those of you, since we've now started the recording, um, for those of you who uh, wanna check out a summit that we have coming up, this is, a, this is a, a landing page for our January 2021. We just finished that summit last weekend, but we have another one coming up in June. We do this twice a year, once in January, once in June. And to find out more information, you can go to mfinsummit.com to find out more information as well. Um, you also could go to MFIN Premium to learn more about our premium membership, which has a lot of content in there about, how to, about lots of different things to learn on a video content platform around multifamily uh, and, and, and how to invest in multifamily. You could do that right now and check that out by going to MFINpremium.com. And of course, if you're interested in investing with us passively, you might have heard me mention it earlier, you can go to PassiveInvesting.com, then click on that, join the Passive Investing Club button at the top right-hand corner and fill out this form. We accept accredited and non-accredited investors. And if you're interested in investing with us passively, fill that form out. Love to jump on a phone call with you and see if we're the right fit for you. So going back into here, we talked about setting your criteria and uh, Bob, I have a question coming in here from Bob saying, is the definition of what or how to classify properties A, B, C, D? So, you know, I, I can go through, through some of those real quick. So your A-class properties are going to be your brand new properties, five to 10 years old, um, maybe not even five years, really you kind of just came online to about 10 years old. And they're going to be your really nice, lots of amenities, lots of higher end finishings, you know, crown molding, granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, and they're going to have a lot of amenities with it as well. So really nice pools, they're going to have tennis courts, and they're going to maybe have, you know, a movie theater inside the facility. You know, there's a lot of additional things that would be on, on for those, those newer properties. The B-class properties are going to be about that 15 to 20 year old property, uh, maybe 25 years old, and they're going to be are uh, still really nice, but they're not going to have as many as the upfits and amenities as you might see in the A-class properties. And then you're going to have your 
uh, your, your C-class property is gonna be more of your workforce housing and also it would include some of your lower end housing, like a, your affordable housing, uh, more of your blue collar worker, if you will. There's also D-class properties, but we don't, I would not suggest investing in. Those are the ones where like we call the, the D zone or the drug zone, right? Um, so we stay away from those. We don't even look at them. I would highly encourage you to stay away from them as well crazy more amount of a lot more work and uh, the returns are a lot riskier because you never know what might happen onto your property so let's see do you teach master lease this is coming from jai uh, do you teach master lease or optioning for apartment buildings so you can certainly do that and usually on a smaller property level like on a you know 10 to 30 unit level you might be able to do that with a with a smaller mom and pop you could you could certainly try to do that um, but we don't usually do that on these larger properties where you're going to really be doing what is called an apartment syndication. Um, you can do a syndication with the smaller properties. It's just a little bit more challenging to be able to get the investors to invest in those properties because they're usually looking for a lower risk property with a lot more units in it as well. So let's dive into these eight ways, these eight strategies for finding multifamily or these, these apartment syndication deals. And you can use these to find some of the lower or the smaller number of units properties, or you can find it to use some of the larger properties. And I'm going to talk about a couple of different strategies here. So first off, the number one way on both sides to be able to find these properties is through a broker. But you have to be very careful about the brokers that you build these relationships with, because if you're trying to build a relationship with a local, say, residential or, excuse me, commercial broker, you might not be able to find what you might not be able to find the projects or the deals that you're looking for. And they might not do things that you're normally accustomed to because you need to find somebody in those markets that you're looking at that are specific to multifamily. They have, they've sold multifamily before. They understand the business around multifamily. And for the smaller properties, you might find somebody who does a mix of like regular commercial versus residential, and then also doing multifamily, but you want to make sure they have a track record in multifamily. The other way to do it is, is, is to, not the other way to do it, but the other side of it is the larger multifamilies are typically always done through, through a broker. It's not always the case, but it typically, I'd probably say at least 95% of the time, you're going to find those apartment buildings being sold by a broker because the brokers are going to allow that seller to get top dollar for their property. And, uh, and so you, and that would be my recommendation is to at least be building relationships with those brokers. And when you first get started, one of the most important things you can do is not try to reach out to brokers in the market that you want to invest in. And the reason why I say that is because you want to get comfortable with talking to these multifamily brokers and they're going to start asking you questions that you may be uncomfortable answering or you'll be fumbling on when you're answering those questions. And so a kind of you know technique that I suggest that you do is you can go to uh, other cities that are outside of your market that you're wanting to invest in. So if you're wanting to invest in say Charlotte or Raleigh, North Carolina, don't reach out initially to Raleigh or Charlotte brokers. Go to say Dallas, Texas or Phoenix, Arizona and start to call on some of those brokers and tell them you're interested in investing in 150 unit or 75 unit or whatever your criteria is type property. And then they'll start asking you questions and it's okay. You can fumble, you can act stupid, you can act like you don't know what they're talking about, but it'll help you hone in your skill and you don't ruin relationships with brokers in markets that you want to invest in. So that'd be my, my biggest encouragement for you to do. And I'm going to give you a couple of names of some broker, large brokerage firms that typically do multifamily that we work with. You have the Marcus and Millichaps of the world. You have the CBREs, you have uh, Cushman and Wakefield, you have uh, NKF. Um, so you have a lot of those large brokers. You even have some of the smaller ones that aren't large national ones, but that'd be more regional. Like in, uh, in the Southeast, you have like Capstone Apartment Partners and you know, various things like that. So those I would suggest, and the way you, to, you could find these initially, just type in multifamily broker and then the city of, of where you're going. So multifamily broker, Greenville, South Carolina. You know, Greenville, South Carolina is really hot right now for finding these multifamily projects and these multifamily deals. And so I would highly encourage you to, um, you know, type in that name, type in multifamily brokers in that city and they'll pop up. And then as you reach out to some of these other brokers, you can ask them, hey, who are some of the other players in this market? That, that, uh, that are more your competition that I could possibly reach out to and build relationships with. And a lot of these brokers are pretty open to be able to do that. 
Um, and see, okay, so these eight, uh, number one is gonna be brokers, right? Brokers, smaller and large properties. And then the rest of these are pretty much geared towards the smaller properties. I would say under 100 units, okay? Um, once you go over 100 units, it's typically gonna be through brokers. But again, it's not always the case. Like I was just on a phone call earlier today with a group that found a property by calling multifamily owners between 100 or 200 units and they found a property that was in the market they're looking for and it was over 100 units and the, 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 um, the seller decided to reach out to them and say, hey, yeah, I've had this property for 20 years and I'm ready to sell this property. I'd be interested in you putting an offer on it. We'll see if we can come to terms. And as long as that offer is in line with what they're looking for, then you might be able to buy that property. So it's not always the case that it's always brokers, but it, in the many cases is the brokers. The second place that I would suggest you finding these people is through LoopNet. And I know a lot of people will kind of call LoopNet the place where deals go to die. And a lot of times that can be the case, but it also could be some diamonds in the rough, or maybe it has a little bit of, you know, hairiness to it, but maybe you're willing to go in there and spend that extra sweat equity and really turning that property around. You know, I've interviewed people on our podcast. Um, we have a multifamily podcast called MF, it's called the Multifamily Investor Nation podcast. You can go to the iTunes or whatever and just type in multifamily investor nation and our podcast will show up. And on that podcast, I only interview people who are closing multifamily deals. And so they have to have closed a deal in the last 12 months. And I bring them onto that podcast and I talk to them about that deal that they closed. And just recently I interviewed somebody who found a deal on LoopNet and it had a really good solid return to it, but they had to do a few extra things and had a little bit extra hair on it, but they were able to take that over because nobody else wanted to do it. And so they were able to do that. They also negotiated a great lower price on that property, but it did have some extra, extra, extra work that had to be done on it. So but they got some really good solid returns for, for themselves as well as their investors. Um, but I would, that's a podcast I would highly encourage you to, 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 uh, uh, to reach, to actually listen to. So for those of you who are on the live webinar, I want to ask you a question. So get to your, your little chat box area or, or whatever. And um, for those of you who are subscribed to that podcast, I want you to raise your hand because we do have a, a lot of subscribers. We have, it only comes out once a week, but we have right now over 10,000 downloads on that podcast every single month. And so I'm curious to know how many people on the webinar are actually listening to that podcast. So if you're on this webinar, you need to go subscribe to that podcast. It's a free resource for you and it allows you to find more information. So I've typed it into the chat box there, MFIN podcast. So thank you for those of you who are on and have subscribed, but for those of you who have not, go on and subscribe it mfinpodcast.com. And uh, I would encourage for those of you who, have, who are um, subscribed to it to go and rate it and give us a review on iTunes specifically. That'll help us be able to expand and, uh, and reach more people with that podcast. Because I was, when I was set it out to be able to do that podcast, I was kind of sick and tired of all the podcasts that just bring on a bunch of gurus on there. And I was like, what's the, what's, what's one way that we can stand out and really provide value to people. And it was being able, I came up with the idea of just interviewing people who are actually closing deals. And, uh, and I think it's very interesting to kind of see everybody's different takes on how they're finding deals, how they're closing it, what they're doing for financing, how they work with investors and you know, all of those things all together gives you a great picture on how everybody else is doing this multifamily syndication. And of course, it helps me be able to provide myself with more content to be able to talk about um, in these webinars because I have things that come up during those calls that are unique things that I can share with the, uh, my audience here with these webinars. So we talked about brokers and LoopNet. The next thing is, is with uh, mailing owners. So there's a tool that you can, there's a, there's a term or a, or a resource that you can do, not a resource, but a, uh, a technique that you can use called web scraping. And you can find somebody um, let's see, which podcast is the one that the person found the deal on LoopNet? I, I, I have so many podcasts on there, I can't remember. But I, if I remember correctly, it probably was one in the last couple of, couple of weeks. So if you listen to like the next you know, couple of them, um, each one you'll find good value on. But each one of those, if you want to listen to those, I'm pretty sure it was in the last probably month that I did that, um, Jai. So I don't know the exact name of that one. I do apologize. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a technique called web scraping. And web scraping is the ability for you to have somebody or hire somebody that will allow you to um, uh, scrape apartment data from apartments.com. 
and then you can cross-reference that data um, on the local city websites. And so what I would encourage you to do to be able to find somebody that could help you with that is go to Upwork, upwork.com. That's where you can find a virtual assistant. You can post a job posting on there, which was basically just say web scraper for online uh, real estate data. And they will be a lot of people that will reach out to you and say that they can build that out for you. And for a couple hundred dollars, you can have, you know, a thousand to 2000 names of apartment owners in a particular city. And what I usually like to have them do is pull that data from apartments.com and then they can cross reference that data. And that's what you have to use. You have to say cross reference the data with a local city records to be able to match up the tax records with the apartments.com data. And so they can merge those two and you'll get a spreadsheet that'll basically have the city, the state, the zip code, the address, uh, the number of units. And I wonder if I can actually find one that I had done uh, about a year and a half ago that I could probably share with you. Let me see if I can find one real quick on here. I'm trying to think of where I would have saved that. Let me see if I can find one here. Um, let's see. Initial assessment. Let's see. I think that would be a good resource for you, but I'm not sure if I can find it that quick for you. Um, let's see. Bear with me here for just a moment, because this will be valuable for you to be able to see this if I can actually find it on here or not. So let me look in one, one more spot here and see if I can find this. Yes, I think I did. I found it. Um, this was actually, um, it was done for me about two years ago, actually. And, uh, and I'm going to share with you this screen so you can actually see the data that I was able to get from this. So let me uh, change my, square, my, my, my screen here to a different screen, new share, and here we go. So here is a, an Excel spreadsheet that I just found. And you can see in here that we were able to, this is for Charlotte, because that that's one of our markets that we look in. And then you'll see that it has the market that it's that we're looking at, which again, it should be all Charlotte. And then the name of the property. So here's the name of the property. I have the addresses. I have the sub market within Charlotte that is located. And then within a, oops, sorry about that. Within apartments.com, they also have the property class. Sometimes it's listed, sometimes it's not. Let me scroll through here and see if any of this data has actually got in. It looks like an empty field. Yeah, so that was actually an empty field, but. Let me pull this up up here and see. We have the star rating because on apartments.com they have star ratings, which is similar to the asset class, but it's not really exactly correlated. And then, of course, it has the year built and the total number of units. It also has the price that they have listed for studios, one beds, two beds, and three beds. And, of course, there's only four beds on there as well. It has the phone number of that property. It has the website of where I can find more information about that property the source of the data. So this is actually the apartments.com listing. You can see right here, I can click on that and pull it right up. And then of course it has ownership information in here as well. And this is where we were cross-referencing the county data with this. So it has the name of the, the owner right here. And then of course it has the address of the owner here, the city, state, and zip code. And if there's any like a like secondary piece of, the, of it as well, they have the attention there. And then this is the unique thing that I was able to find too, is the year purchased and the deed date. And so of course you can get the sale price in there as well. And again, some of this data is gonna be blank because this is, this is data where we're, we're, we're harvesting. We have to sift through that data, right? Um, and so, but the nice thing about having this in Excel is that you can now take this data and you can sort it. So I can go over here to data and go filter data, okay? And I can now take this data, excuse me, actually, let me back up here. I can click on this first row and clay, say filter data. And now if I want to find properties, you can see here that if I want to find properties that are a certain number of units, let's do that first. So this is the total number of units right here. I can say, I only want to look at properties that are under a hundred units. So I can go over here and find all these properties that are under a hundred units and just uncheck all these other ones that I don't want. Right. And when I go through here, which there's a lot of them, so I won't go through all of them, but you can kind of get the idea. I can uncheck all the ones that I don't want. So if I want to only look at ones that are, you know, um, I'll say at least five units, but I want them to be, at, you know, at least 20 units. I can go in here and just check all these boxes that I want um, for those properties. So let's see, we can go 18, 19, 20. 
I just press okay. Now it's filtered it down to all the information that I want for just these apartment owners, okay? And now I know the names, the addresses, and you know, some of the data is gonna be missing because this is a web scrape. This is not a software I'm using or anything like that. This is a, a person that I hired on upwork.com to be able to do this for me. And let's see here, I, I tell you what, I could probably, uh, as I say, I'm not sure if I can give you this data here, but um, this is this is a pretty easy to do, okay? So there's no software, but you go to upwork.com, you hire somebody on Upwork, and you just put a job posting that says web scraper, um, you know, uh, a real estate data. Um, and then in the description, you just want to say, I would like for you to, scra to scrape the apartments.com website for Charlotte, North Carolina, and cross-reference it with the local city data and give me the names of the, you know, the property owners and the purchase price and the sale price and any other data that you can harvest so I can sort it. And so let me show you what this actually can do because um, we were able to do this and we found um, properties from 1980 to 2005 that were not sold in the last 10 years because if they just sold in the last five years or so, chances are they might not be, be doing that. Um, and those of you who are asking, yes, I am recording this webinar. So for those of you who register, we will send it out to you so you have a copy of that. Because um, I'm going through a lot of information. I'm going through it pretty fast, um, but it's hard for me to slow down because I don't, my quality goes down when I slow down. So I'm trying to get all this information in for you as well. And uh, we, so we got a, a, some data that was 1980 to 2005 not sold in the last 10 years, and then between 150 to 250 units. And so I saved this result here. So let me pull it up and I'll share it with you as well so you can kind of see. So this, this, this original spreadsheet that you're looking at, if I take out the sorts that I just said, take out the sorting, you can see that if I go all the way down to the end of this spreadsheet, and this is uh, over 1,700 units, 1,700 properties. So um, 1,747 properties. Well, we were able to harvest this data and filter it down to just the ones we wanted. And so let me show you what it actually came up with. So again, you can see on the top there, it's, from, it's, it's in Charlotte, 1980 to 2005, not sold in the last 10 years, 150 to 250 units. Now I can simplify my life and I only have 36 properties that I need to follow up on. And so sometimes you're gonna get good information on how to contact that owner, but sometimes you gotta do a little more work. Sometimes you gotta find, get that address, which you already have listed here, mail them something, go show up at the property, ask, do a, do a secret shot, maybe ask them who owns it. There's a lot of different ways to be able to find information about these different owners to see if they may be interested and ready now to be able to, to sell that. But now, instead of going through over a thousand records, over 1700 records, and now I'm down to 36. So you can see how beneficial this can be to, be able to send it, simplify where you're going to search for these properties based on the criteria that you have that, you have a, that you've selected as well. So let's go back to this page, which is the, the main page that I was that we, we started on. And, uh, and you can kind of see, uh, we can kind of keep on track. So we got brokers, loop net, mailing owners. And then uh, I do have a question in here. It says, uh, do you have to create the cell headers or will the virtual assistant know what to look for? So we did not create those headers. Those are just all the data pulled out and they cross referenced it from the apartments.com data with the uh, local city data and they pull all those fields for us. So we did not have to give that to them, but that was, that's actually a great question. So Trey's asking, the owner is almost always an LLC. How do you get a person's name? A lot of times you can go to the county records and look up the deeds. So those deeds are signed by someone. So you get that person's name and you can do some things like skip tracing or something like that to be able to find owner information. But a lot of times that can be a lot of work. And so a lot of times you can just go to the property and do a tour of the property and ask who owns it. And see if maybe you can get a hold of the name, get the name of the, the, the entity that owns it that has a real company instead of just a single purpose entity. And you can find some information about those people. So you can reach out to them directory to, to directory. Can also use number of filters to speed up the process. Yes, that's correct. No, no software it's via, with a VA. And how much did you pay for this service on Upwork? I think I ended up paying about 200 to $300 for this, for them to do it. And you, it took them about three or four days to be able to harvest that data. So it's a really pretty quick process to be able to get this done. 
how would they cross-reference with local city data from a county website, for example? Yes, that's correct. So if you can go, if you, they, if you, they can usually, fit my, my, my VA found it. I don't know who, I don't have their contact information again, or I would share that with you, but uh, they can usually find the local tax records. And there's usually a database that they can actually tie into to be able to scrape that county website with that data. So good question there. All right. Next question we have coming in. Nope, yep, I'm talking about the replays. Yes, we will have replays of the webinar. So brokers, loop net, mailing owners. The fourth one is very similar to number five, but the fourth one is going and, and, and going to apartment association meetings. So most areas have an apartment association and a lot of these apartment owners, especially the local ones, will go to these meetings. And the other thing that will also do is it'll allow you to meet some of the property managers in the area as well. Number six is local real estate investor association meetups. So these RIA meetups, a lot of times you'll find investors there that own these smaller properties or even some of the larger ones and they may be ready to be able to offload these properties. And as long as you're there at the right time, then they may be able to um, you know, give you their property if you give them the right price for that property as well. And so number six is very similar to number five in the fact that when you go to these apartment association meetings, you're gonna be able to network with a lot of these apartment owners, but also the property managers. And um, I do know, uh, Jai, one of these uh, episodes on our podcast, um, I don't know the exact uh, episode number, but it was with Larry Abramowitz. And he found out that he, with, through one of his property management companies, he was able to find other owners because he could call these property managers because they know that they're managing all these assets and they're getting on weekly asset management calls with these owners and telling them, say, hey, would you talk to your owner and see if he might be interested in selling because I'm ready and I have capital to place and I would like to see if he'd be interested in selling. And he got a deal that way. So the, the property management company actually ended up wholesaling the, the deal to him. I think it was like, you know, over 100 units, maybe 200 units that he was able to be able to get that property via finding information from the property managers. So that's, there's, there's lots of different unique ways to be able to find, find uh, these, these owners that you want to make sure you can do. So we talked about the brokers, LoopNet, mailing owners, apartment association meetings, local RIAs, the real estate investment clubs and association clubs, the property managers. And then the last two, number, number seven, is going to be driving for dollars. And what we mean by that is, is basically just going to the market that you're wanting to invest and driving the areas and the sub markets that you want to invest in. And if you see a property, go figure out who owns it. You can go, go on site, talk to the property manager, talk to the, to the people on site. And if there's nobody on site, go tour the property and talk to maybe some of the residents and see if they can give you, get, put you in contact um, with, those, with those owners. It just depends on how much time and energy you want to put into finding these deals and how aggressive you want to do with it. And then number eight is wholesalers. Typically in every market, there are wholesalers. And what I mean by wholesalers is that there are people that are in those markets that are driving for dollars every day themselves. And when they find something like this, they build relationships and they'll wholesale it. So they might say, hey, there's this property that we're selling for $3 million. And then you give them 1% to wholesale it to you, meaning that they'll, they're the ones negotiating with the, with the seller. And then they can turn it over to you for like 1% and they get that 1% when you close the deal. And you just pay for it out of those, out of the raise of the money that you're raising for that apartment syndication. So those are the eight different strategies that I have for you. And I want to open it up for questions. I know you guys have had questions throughout. I've been trying to answer them. If you have any further questions for me, feel free to type it into that, that uh, Q and A or the chat box. So we can keep track of them. Um, so those are the top eight strategies for finding these apartment syndication deals. Um, and so make sure that you set your criteria and look for those top, look, look, use those top eight things. Primarily our group only goes through brokers. That's how we find our off market deals. And that's how we found our on marketed deals. But you have to make sure when you're talking with these brokers that you talk the talk and you walk the walk. If you tell them you're going to do something, make sure that you do it. One of the best ways to build relationships with those brokers is to find properties that they're currently marketing. And even if it's not a property that you don't want, you can actually go in and uh, when you, you can actually go tour those properties to build relationships with those brokers. And so they can see that face-to-face -face contact because they get contacted all the time with people who are interested in, interested in finding deals. And then they never close a deal and they never go tour a deal and they, they never deepen that relationship with that broker. So I would highly encourage you to do that. 
So I do have a couple of questions that are coming in. And let's see, Muhammad's asking, can you explain the apartment owner again on number five, I think. Yes. So on number five, we talked about going to local real estate investment groups. And so these RIA clubs, the Real Estate Investment Association clubs, they usually meet on a monthly basis. And a lot of these apartment owners will, especially the smaller ones, will go to these, these RIA clubs for networking purposes. And so you can go to those, those meetups and actually network with people. Now, there's going to be people there that might be owning smaller properties like these duplexers or triplexes or maybe even just single family homes, but you're going to find people there that will also be investing in multifamily as well. The more you show up there and network with those people, you'll be able to find people there that, are, that own some of these types of properties as well. So I have a question coming in here from Winston. How do you find a KP or key principal who can sponsor your project for, a, I'm assuming from a loan guarantor standpoint um, for your syndication? One of the best ways to do that is to be doing that through networking. And, you know, and then you can do it through our event, the Multifamily Investor Nation Summit, which is an online virtual event. There's ways that we have an actually called an MFI and forum that's only available to our um, uh, our premium members, as well as those that register for the events each time. And so if you want to have access to that, you can register for our summit to do that, but you can also go to other live events. And so I actually have a database that I put together of events. So that's a good question here. I'm going to see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, the actual spreadsheet that I put together uh, for that. And I can share that document with you and you can actually go and have access to that. So let me see if I can find it here real quick and then I'll share that document with you. Give me just a moment. I'm trying to do this on the fly because you asked me that question. So give me just a quick moment here and let me see if I can find this. Okay, not in, I need actually the, the sheets I need. I, people were asking me about, you know, different places to be able to find um, uh, a list of all the events that are coming up. And so I decided to go and create a calendar that would allow you to have uh, all of the events that are coming up um, in the next, uh, you know, couple of months or so and during that year. And so I've been trying to build this out so that you guys have access to this and you can actually see what these are. Um, yes, here it is. I actually just found it. So let me see if I can share this link with you and let's see. Uh, one of the ones coming up actually is going to be uh, in, in Keystone, Colorado. This is now January, 2020 and, and it's Keystone, Colorado. And you can go to bestever2020.com. I'll type it into the chat box here and you can register there for uh, a ticket. Uh, I'm going to be there at that event. I'm going to be speaking at it. I'm not putting it on or anything. It's actually an event put on by Joe Fairless. And uh, so I'd highly encourage you to check that out and, uh, and go to his event there um, at uh, bestever2020.com. So let me see if I can find this link here. I'm going to share this link with you. Uh, anyone with the link to view, copy the link, and then we will put it into the chat box for you. So put it into the chat box right now. Boom. So you should have a link to that at, to that uh, um, a website. So the best ever 2020.com is where you can register for the best ever conference. It is one of the best, if not the best conference I've been to in the in recent years. And I've just recently been invited to speak at that event. I'm actually going to be a moderator on one of the panels they'll have there. I'll also be a panelist on a different uh, panel uh, as, a, as an actual speaker there. And then on Thursday at that event, I'll also be speaking as well alongside the other uh, managing partners with our group, PassiveInvesting.com. So you can certainly uh, click on that link. Hopefully it works. And we'll be, there's only a few of them on there right now. But as, as we try to find more events and things like that, we will be putting it on there. So make sure you bookmark that, uh, that link so you can actually see uh, the various people that are going to be coming to that. So you can see it right there. Uh, this is actually for 2019. So I could actually edit this and get rid of these from 2019. Delete rows five to eight. Let's see. There we go. And then I can say delete these ones as well. And those are the ones coming up. We just had the virtual one here. So those are done. We can get rid of those. Delete rows. And then uh, those are the two that I have put in here. I will be continuing to add these on here. If you know of other people who are putting on events and you want to uh, have me to add it to here, feel free to re email it to me and, uh, and I can do that for you as well. 
Um, on this particular one, I will add a promo code on here so that you can actually, uh, after I uh, come off this screen, because I don't think it's gonna be valid for very long, um, but I will come off that screen and add it on there for you and uh, as I go on. So let me do that real quick. I'm gonna pause my screen. You'll still see it, everything, but while you're on here, I'm gonna type in a promo code and it'll allow you to get 30% off of your tickets right now at uh, bestever2020.com. So again, this, 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 this promo code is not available uh, for, for very long. Um, so you'll have to use that uh, fairly quickly if you want to do that. But I would highly encourage you to go there to find KPs because KPs aren't going to work with you unless you network and, and find ways to be able to do that, but to find ways to get in front of these people and uh, build those relationships. Next question is, what are your thoughts on the best way to source and vet sponsors or syndicators if you are a passive investor? So Jason, this is a great question. So um, it's one thing that... Uh, I've, I've always tell people, well, our investors that I know that I'm not, our group is not going to be the only group that they invest with, but if, uh, if, they, if, if I can be a resource to somebody, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. And I'm right now myself in, in 19 different syndications with eight different operators, myself personally. And so I'm constantly vetting people and underwriting projects based on their, their projects and stuff like that. And so if you're interested and want to have that conversation with me, Jason, you can certainly reach out to me directly. Would love to be a resource for you. You can email me at dan at passiveinvesting.com and I can kind of give you some thoughts on, you know, if you are looking at somebody and you want me to give you my opinion on it, I'm not going to tell you to invest with somebody or not to invest, but I'll give you my opinion and uh, maybe tell you my thoughts on that particular group if I have any. Um, and then uh, we can kind of go from there. So uh, hopefully that'll be a resource for you there as well, uh, Jason. Next question here is, oh, you're, you're welcome, Katrina, about 30%. Uh, uh, for the for the uh, the best ever, um, they actually reached out to me and they said, "Hey, would you be interested in this?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah," because you know they don't usually give discounts at all to any of their any of their people, but um, any of their their attendees uh, for that event because it's a very high quality event and it's worth what you pay for that event. Um, so I would highly encourage you to do that. The thirty percent off does not work for the VIP tickets because those those usually sell out and so they don't give any discounts on that. Um, but you can certainly do the, uh, the regular, regular, regular tickets at 30% off as well. And uh, you can also come out there and ski with myself and my wife. We'll be out there enjoying the slopes and in uh, and, and, and Keystone. Richard's asking, don't you find working broker listed properties generally means you're in a beauty contest with other competing offers, short contingency periods, and non-refundable earnest money? You find that as well, or you have other strategies to compete. So I would say it depends on the size of the properties. Obviously, the larger properties right now, because of the, the state of the market, is going to always be that way uh, when you're going through brokers. But we have uh, actually two projects right now that we submitted LOIs on last week. And we were like one of five people because we start, we're starting to close deals with these brokers and they're sending us these off market properties. And even though they're technically marketed because they're sending it to five different groups, we get lower competition because of that. And, uh, and so we're hopefully going to get some of these deals awarded to us pretty soon as well. And, uh, but um, we're, we're constantly working our, 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 our relationships with these brokers to be able to build those relationships um, to be able to get some of these off market deals. But it is, it is sometimes uh, competition, lots of competition. Like, you know, we just closed on a deal in Raleigh, North Carolina, $51.5 million property. And uh, we ended up uh, competing with about 30 to 40 different groups. And we ended up being the top five and then competed with the top, ten, top two. And at the end of the day, the, the seller thought we were going to be the best one to be able to close it. And we did. And we closed it actually a day early on that property. But we did, as you said, Richard, have a tight timeline for closing. So we had to close that property uh, within uh, 51 days. We had a 21-day due diligence and a 30 days to close with no option to extend. And we were able to, able to perform that by using some bridge debt and bringing in our investors and uh, our investors loved that property and that deal. We ended up getting an appraisal on it that had over, almost over $2 million in equity the day we closed on it. Um, so I feel, still feel like we got a solid deal on that property. Um, but yes, there is definitely a lot of competition, Richard. And I don't think that's anything you've got to get around until maybe the next recession. Um, but uh, I would not encourage you to just sit, or sit, along the, sit on the sidelines and do nothing. I think right now there's still good deals that could be had as well. All right, so I told you and I promised you that I would show you this special software. Um, so let me pull that up here for you so you can actually see this. I'm gonna show you a software that I think I might've shared it last week on one of our webinars, um, but it's something that's very important that I would highly encourage you to be able to, 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 to use. 
I'm going to show you some uh, deal flow that we used from, uh, what is it, from 20, for 2019. And this is, this is the software we use. It's a software called Airtable. And Airtable, it's not, Airtable is not built for this purpose, but we've customized their software because of how well you can customize it for this particular purpose. And so with Airtable, we have this spreadsheet and uh, I'm going to give you a link in here into the chat box if you wanted to, to sign up for it. Um, and just so you know, full disclaimer, I get a $10 credit if you sign up. So just sign up for their account and start playing around with it. You can, you can use their free trial or whatever. I still get a $10 credit just for you signing up. I'm just telling you that because that's not why I do these webinars, but if I share a resource with this, why not give me a $10 credit for, for you signing up for it? So I put the little invite in there for you to sign up. And uh, um, let me resume my screen here and you can see the deal flow that we have. This is the deal flow that we have. You can kind of see our, our one deals as well as the lost deals. So these are deals that we actually lost. So we put an offer on them and we lost them. And then of course you can see these are decline deals. We have a lot of those decline deals in here. Let me kind of show you some of these projects and what it looks like inside of here. And um, for those of you who might be thinking, you know, is this something that you can share with us? Is this a template? It is, but we have this inside of our premium membership. So if you're interested in joining us on our premium membership, you can certainly do that. Right now we're offering a, a, a free trial on it. So you can do that. And then after the free trial, you can sign up for only, it's only $99 a month and you can cancel at any time. So you can certainly go to there, mfinpremium.com, sign up for that. And then included in that membership will be this template. We also have another template in here that we're using for Airtable, which keeps track of our investors. And, uh, and so I can share that template with you as well so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So it is worth it for you to sign up for that premium membership so you can get access to the free, not the free, but the, 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 the video content training in there. You also get access to this spreadsheet. So inside of here, you can see we put the property name, the status of the property. You can see these various statuses, uh, properties to consider, properties to analyze, pending initial underwriting, pending tour, pending the full underwriting, pending the underwriting review, pending LOI, LOI submitted, pending best and final, um, best and final LOI submitted, PSA pending, due diligence, raising capital phase, pending closing, closed one, closed lost, and closed declined. And, uh, and so uh, the next thing here is linked to CoStar. So we have a subscription to CoStar, which gives us a lot of data analytics for our properties that we're looking at. And so um, I would highly encourage you to reach out to somebody at CoStar if you're interested in that. Um, and I can give you the name of the person that we use there. His name is Todd Forrest, and you can reach out to him. Um, easy phone number to remember, 803-200-1000, 803-200-1000, Todd Forrest. I don't get anything for that, but they are a sponsor with our, uh, our, our, our multifamily investor nation and each one of the summits that we're having as well. They are one of our platinum sponsors. So I'd encourage you to use them. We use it and that's why we like uh, and we're talking about them as well. Um, broker information's in here, the city that we're in, the year built, number of units, any notes on the property, the address of the property, the offer due date, um, the underwriting model we put in here, the actual spreadsheet of the model is actually in here. The offering memorandum and, in, and the T12 and the rent roll, you can see here T12, rent roll documents, and you can see they actually give us updated ones. And then all the tax documents we load in here as well as we retrieve those, any documents from CoStar, the, man, the property management company's pro forma, any other files, comp, competitive analysis documents, comp photos, CapEx files. So you can see this is all built out in here. The LOI um, the attachment is in here the LOI submission date or when it was submitted, the deal close date, interest rate, tour picks, drone footage. As you're, prop, as you're touring this property, you can easily load these photos inside of um, this software so that you can have these, these photos housed in here. And it's easily accessible. They even have an app that you can put on your phone that will allow you to be able to access this on the fly. As you're taking pictures, you can load them into the software at the same time. You have sellers, brokers, financing, equity investors, contractors and managers, um, the geocache, the market again, financing, investor docs. So it's all built out in here. And the nice thing is, is that it has a, an, an actual communication log on here as well. So that as you guys are communicating with the, as a team or even by yourself, you can put notes in here as to what you're trying to do. Talking about um, like it, what we use it for is, is to communicate back and forth on, hey, it's ready to underwrite. Let's, let's talk about that for the pricing guidance. 
You can see in here from broker, CFO, the call for offers most likely May 21st, targeting 38 million, um, including 33 thousand square foot of ground floor retail and a nice blended yield, unique asset with large percentage of units within closed quarters and elevators above the retail. And so there's a lot of details in here that we actually list out in this, in this here, but we lost, we lost this deal. We actually ended up declining it. So you can see that down here because we ended up passing on it because of, you know, some various reason. I don't know what it was, but it's in there as well. And so next time, you know, two or three years from now, when this deal comes on again, we can search our declined projects and see maybe why we decided to pass on that project. So this is a very nice software to be able to use. You can group things and hide things by different, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, different fields. You can have different views inside of it. So deals by stage, active deals, property summaries, financing summaries, and you can actually see how all of this would actually work if you go ahead and sign up for that free, free trial. So you can do that free trial. And if you're interested in using this template, feel free to join us on our MFIN Premium. We'd love to have you. It's a great resource for you to be able to use uh, to be able to just plug and play. But you don't have to sign up for the MFIN Premium membership to use Airtable. So you can use that link that I just put in there. Or just go to airtable.com and sign up for a free membership and uh, or a free, free, I'm not sure what their pricing is. I'm sure it will change uh, periodically. But you can go on there and sign up and you can build all this out yourself. So you don't have to have uh, use our, our template. It just makes it easier for you to have that easy push button access to be able to do that. So that's all I have for today. Um, I'm coming up on, I usually only go for about you know, 30, 35 minutes, but we're coming up on about an hour right now. So um, I appreciate each one of you being attentive and uh, hopefully you found this valuable. So if you found this valuable, raise your hand as an attendee, as you're, as you're live on there, or give me a chat, let me know this. There's a list of, I just try to be as open and, and as transparent as possible, showing you exactly what we do. And, uh, and like Greg said there, some golden nuggets. So I know that a lot of things that we do seems like old hat because we've been doing it for so long, but there are unique things that can be very helpful for you to be able to do in your own syndication group as you continue to grow and as you can continue to get big as well. So thank you for, for being here and being attentive. I love questions. It helps us. And I want to encourage you right now, our next Topic that is up. Let me refresh this screen here. It should, let's see if it worked. On the next topic, we've already got it posted. So we're trying to stay ahead of the game in 2020. We're going to be talking next week on SEC regulations for apartment syndications. But we're going to be talking about how many investors you need before being required to register with the SEC. How do I know if I'm selling a security when I bring on investors? What is regulation D? What are the differences between 506E and 506C offerings? And when am I allowed to advertise my deal? So I'm going to type in the chat box for those of you who are on live. You can go to uh, multifamilyinvestornation.com slash MFIN, excuse me, MFIN webinar. I think that'll work. Let me just type into the chat box and see if this actually works. There we go. I'm going to click on it while we're in here as well and uh, see if it actually comes up. Yes, there it is. So in the chat box, I give you that link. If you want to watch, uh, follow us for that one. And it's going to be next Thursday on January 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern. And then moving forward, we're actually going to be doing most of these um, on Thursdays. So Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, you can block off your calendar for the next several uh, months. That's when we're going to try to do that. Every once in a while when I'm traveling and I'm not able to do that, I might move it a little bit here and there, but we'll definitely let you know about that. And my goal is to have these ahead of time. And thanks to Melissa, who has also joined our team back in December, who is helping us coordinate this and making sure that these are, are, uh, are, are being done ahead of time. We've actually already built out the entire content for the next quarter, and we're going to be doing that quarter by quarter. So um, feel free to uh, click on that link and register for the next summit. And then the replay for this one will be sent out. And usually in the next 24 hours, we'll have this done and sent out to you via email. And so you can actually easily click on it. So thank you so much for joining us. Looking forward to having you on the next webinar next Thursday. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.